Today, let's talk about the trout fishing in the Shenandoah National Park in the month of April. This is excellent for dry fly fishing. There are a couple of situations where the nymph fishing is very good, but there, the water level is usually ideal. The water temperature is ideal, and the density of the aquatic insects really makes April one of the greatest months for us to fish in a park. What you see there on the left is the Quill Gordon spinner coming back to lay eggs. You can see the egg deposits right there. She's coming back to deposit those eggs in the stream. Now at that time, I match that with the Mr. Rapidan parachute dry fly in a size 16. These can be very heavy. I remember one evening coming out of a mountain stream, all oh, the last hour of daylight, let's say, and I really have no question that between the spinners coming back to lay eggs, the duns hatching out, there's no question in my mind I was seeing a thousand mayflies in the air. And that brings the fish up, and we can really get some good fishing in there. They'll be riding right along the corner, right where the fast water meets the slow water. I would probably catch a good feeder right in there, maybe on the other side, and then over on the far side with that. Probably fishing, oh, I'd go, go to 6x liters by this time of the year, certainly 5x. But that is good fishing. It's a heavy hatch, and this hatch is on the first, probably the first three weeks of April. So definitely think about that when you're going. Now, at overlapping that and lasting pretty much the whole month is the blue quill mayfly. This is a fragile mayfly subject to the influence of the weather conditions, but it's well met, matched with the blue quill dry fly. I really don't fish a nymph on that because I don't feel I need to. The only vulnerable time for that mayfly is if the water temperature would drop a little bit, the air temperature would drop a little bit, the duns wouldn't be able to get off the water very quickly, and they, the fish would probably end up feeding on them in the back eddies. But that is a wonderful hatch, and that is on the whole month, and almost every stream has that. A pool like this, I would probably catch one right along this edge, maybe one further out, and then further out, I could probably even pick up the th third fish feeding on the blue quills. They're so dense that the fish really are ready to take care, take advantage of them. Uh, the March Brown is a wonderful hatch. It's a big hatch. If you looked at that beside the quill gourd, you could definitely tell that this mayfly is larger. However, I do not go any bigger than the 14. I do go to the standard tie. That really matches it. If you turn the tummy of that fly, artificial fly over and the tummy of the natural, you would see how this is matched very well by that. This is great fishing. It's because it's on the whole month long and the density is almost as heavy as the Quill Gordon hatch. Now, there are some situations where a lot of the nymphs out in the middle of the stream will leave the heavy current in the middle of the stream and move over to the edge of the stream to hatch off. And under those circumstances, I go to the Mr. Rapidan Brown Soft Tackle in about a size 14. I fish it upstream dead drift through the main part of the current. If I see a disturbance over in the side of the pool, which right along in there, many times you'll see a disturbance back there and your first thought is that guy's over there working on dry flies. Yes, some of them will be, but some of them are taking those nymphs that are moving from the center of the stream all the way out to the side to hatch. The trout are going to take whichever they come to first, and that is fast fishing, and that that they'll start coming off heaviest about noon, two o'clock in the afternoon, but they'll continue hatching all the way into the evening. And of course, then you have the spinners coming back in the evening. Now, to help me detect the strikes, I use this new leader we're developing. 
we've had a lot of people ask for shorter leaders, so we've actually developed a leader that's only six feet long. At this time of the year, and with these flies, I'd be fishing six, uh, 5X. I do put one of the Murray's indicator on there to help, in this case, with dead drift nymphing. But that really turns over quickly and at close range, gives you well, just perfect accuracy on all of these. Now, in the book, I've got a couple chapters there that I feel would really help you at this time of the year. There are chapters in there on the tactics that we use. A relatively short chapter, I think something like eight pages. But it's telling you how to use the tactics according to the type fishing you're doing. Now, there's another chapter in there on reading the water that is very helpful. These are the six possible feeding stations. The lip, the tail, the mid pool, the head, the corner, and the back eddy. Now, the largest fish in that pool is going to select what I call the primary feeding station. This is an area that will give him the maximum amount of food for the least amount of effort. Basically, he's seeking something that will block the current for him, but will still allow a lot of food to come down to him. There are two feeding stations that are one of the two is going to have the big trout. The lip would be the first place I would consider. I'm coming in from downstream. I'm actually standing in the pool below that. And I'm going to drop my fly maybe two feet, three feet above the lip of the pool and let it drift right to him. You'll probably see that guy rising. Now, if for some reason there is not good protection, see, the, he's holding in front of these boulders. If there are pool just sort of has a gravel tail and it slides out of there and there's no place for him to hold, he's just not going to be there. If he is not on the in the lip of that pool, he's going to be on the corner. Now the corner, the current is actually coming down here, hitting this and going back up in there. Sometimes taking a shorter turn. A corner is a miniature Lazy Susan often the size of a dinner plate, and that trout is lying back in there facing toward the R in the corner. He's lying back in there feeding this way. The current's taking those mayflies back there, and he's in there feeding like crazy. That is definitely the hot spot if the stream gets high. Anytime there's so much water in the rest of the pool, you think he's going to wash away, he snuggles up in that corner and just sits there and feeds all day long. But you've got to remember now, the current is actually going in the wrong direction. The current is drifting back this way. That's the way mayflies are going, and that's the way he's lying to take those flies. So that it's valuable to understand that. The back eddy that I mentioned on the blue quill, that's where they're going to get washed if it's a real cold day and they can't get their wings dried off. The bad, those blue quills are going to end up in that back eddy. So it's very helpful to get a handle on just what's going on. And this should help you tremendously in fishing in April. The basically, I just get out and take advantage of it because April can be wonderful for the whole month. Thank you very much.